Welcome back. I will be eating turkey in a little over an hour, and I want to work up an appetite, so I will move forward and continue with the SAT problems. Today's Thanksgiving, by the way. That's why I'm a little extra excited about the turkey. Problem number one. Oh, by the way, we're on page 47, section 9 of, of the, uh, what is it called? The Official SAT Study Guide. Problem number one. There is the same number of boys and girls on a school bus when it departs from school. At the first, so let's say boys, so at the beginning, boys equals girls. I don't know if this is going to be useful for me to write that, but let's, let's see. At the first stop, four boys get off the bus and nobody gets on. So stop one. Stop one. So minus four boys. After the first stop, there are twice as many girls as boys on the bus. So now their girls is equal to two times, two times the boys. How many girls are there on the bus? So you could almost do this by inspection, but what you could say is, well, here there there were the boys is equal to the girls, right? Then we subtract four from the boys. So this b is actually a different b. This is two times the new one, b minus four. Why does that make sense? Well, we have we start off with b boys. At the first stop, four get off. So now there are b minus four boys. And at the end it says that there are twice as many girls as there are boys now. And b minus four are the number of boys there are now. So now girls is equal to two times b minus four. But we also know that girls is equal to this initial b, right? We say b is equal to 2b minus 8. I just distributed the 2. And then if we subtract b from both sides, you get, and add 8 to both sides, you get 8 is equal to b. And you could have probably thought about that. I mean, you didn't have to do all this fancy algebra. You could have just said, well, when four boys leave, I'm ha left with half as many boys, right? Because before I had just as many girls as boys. Then four leave, and I have half as many, right? Because now the number of girls is doubled. So if I have some amount of something, and when four leave, I'm left with half, then we know we started with eight. So you could have just done it without the algebra, but this is one way you could make sure you had the right answer. But it probably would have taken you too long. So the best way might have been just to do it in your head. All right, problem number two. And I will do it in magenta. Which of the following is the graph of a linear function with a negative slope and a positive y-intercept? So I'm not even going to look at those with their choices, and it'll take me forever to draw them. I'm just going to draw my own graph that describes what they're saying. So that's the x and y axes. And so they say graph of a linear function. So linear function means it's going to be a line. Negative slope. So negative slope means that it, it goes from the top left to the bottom right, right? Because we move to the right. The negative slope means that the, the graph's going to move down, so it's going to go. It's going to be a, a negative inclination and a positive y-intercept. So that means it intersects the y-axis in the positive y area. So a, a suitable line would look something like this, right? It would intersect here and move down, so it would look like this. And if we look at the choices of which ones do that, well, D is the only one that looks like what I just drew, so the choice is D. Problem number three. Problem three. Refer to the following price list, I guess, for problems three and four. So let me draw the price list. So number of donuts. Donuts. I can never spell donuts. I always want to write out dough. But anyway, donuts. And then it says total price. Total price. It says, if I get one donut, it's going to cost me 40 cents. If I get six donuts, a box of six, it's going to cost me $1.89. And if I get 12 donuts, it's going to cost me $3.59. And the question is, question number three, of the following, which is the closest, closest approximation of the cost per donut when one purchases a box of six? Well, a box of six costs $1.89, right? So it's literally a dollar eighty nine divided by six, a dollar eighty nine over six, and you can eyeball that. It's thirty 
32, it's a little over 30 cents, right? It's 30. If it was $1.80, it would be 30 cents, and then you have to have 9 divided by 6. So it's like 31 and 1 third cents. It's approximately 31 cents, right? And if you look at it, they give you very rough numbers, so it's choice B. And what they want you to do is do this quickly. They don't want you to actually divide the numbers. They want to say, oh, well, $1.89 divided by 6 is roughly 30 cents. And you do that problem really, really fast. Now problem number four, we use the same price list. What would be the least amount of money needed to purchase exactly 21 donuts? Well, if we want to purchase 21 donuts, we want to get it in as, kind of as big uh, uh, chunks as possible. So let's see, if, if we got 12 exactly 21 donuts. So I mean, it could have been tricky, like maybe 24 donuts would have been cheaper or something. But we want exactly 21. So we want to get you know, one dozen of this, because this is going to be a little under 30 cents per donut, right? Because 360 would be 30 cents. And then we want to get one of these, right? And then we want to get, let's see, six, that would get us to 18. And then we want to get three of these, right? Times three. So let's see. It would be six times, oh, whoops, it's, so it's three times 140, which is a dollar 20, right? Plus 189, plus 359. So 9 plus 9 is 18. 1 plus 2 plus 10 is 11, 16, and then 668. And that is choice B. This is for problem number four, not problem number three. Problem number four. Let's move on. And we'll switch colors. I will switch colors. Number five. I think I'm going to have to do some drawing now. The figure above, which, which of the following is closest to h of 5? Yeah, I'll have to draw that one. So let me draw the coordinate axes. Oh, that's my x-axis. This is my y-axis. Let's see, the graph does something, something like this. Something like, let me, let me draw the markers. So, all right, so this is 2, 4, 6, and so on. And they say 2, 4, and 6, and so on. This is minus 2 minus 4, and so on. And the graph looks something like this. So that's this here, minus 6. Let me do a different color. It's like we start at minus 6, and then it crosses. It goes like someplace, goes like there, roughly. Then it dips down to like here. And it dips down, something like that. And then it. Then it does something. I'm trying to be exact because this is actually all dependent on the graph. It's going to be something like that. And they want to know, after I've drawn this graph, they want to know what is the closest to h of 5? h of 5. Well, this is h of x. This is 5. So h of 5 is just going to be this point right here. All right, And if we go. The left, it looks like, well, it looks like right in between two and four, right? And what's right in between two and four? Well, three. And it's, it looks even more like that when you look at it on the the graph they drew. My graph, you could, you could argue it's close to two, but when you look at the one in the book, you can see that it's close to three. And I have a minute left, so I will do that in the next video.